That's in. It's nice and smooth. So we can pull that out. Put it down there. Hope everything's lined up. And it all seems to be. That's where the problem's gonna be, trying to shove that transmission in. Granted, it's lined up, let's see. Oh, right there's where the pilot bearing is gonna hit, and then you, you're gonna have to shove it in. It's not, it's not exact, because you get a little bit of a drop on it, and it's, it's just, uh, It's going to be a problem. Oh. That should be good. I was actually thinking of putting some electrical tape around here so to get it so it's an actual tight fit in that bearing. But when I put it pushed it in there it was it was it was pretty close. I think there's a little bit of a taper on this. But uh it was real close so I didn't and now I kind of wish that I did. So Let's clean some of this crap up. And uh, yeah, we'll get ready to slide the transmission forward. Um, I'm gonna sweep out underneath here because a lot of dirt and stuff fell off and it's definitely not gonna roll very well the way that the ground's all dirty, so. All right, let's try to Get this thing back in there. It's not very, very easy to push.
All right. So, what I don't want to do, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself and then not get the clutch fork on. Stuff in my eyes. So, I'm gonna make sure this clutch fork is in the right position. And it's gotta go like up around it. I think we, we should be good. So, a way to see if you're centered or going in straight is you just kind of measure here the flange. So, I'm two and three quarters. Over here, I'm three. And over here, I am just a little under three. I'm on two and three quarters of so what I need to do is probably make it all three. Because I'm pretty much three side to side, so I gotta tip this forward a little bit more. Close to three. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're about we're a little over three up here, so I'm gonna try to make it three all the way around. I mean that's that's not a magic number, that's just the number I'm using because that's where we're at. Just under three, so I think we're close. I should go on. I know I shouldn't be where I am. I am, so let's give it a push. So, as you're going in, you're going to have to rotate that clutch fork a little bit around it because if you don't, it'll stab straight into the clutch. And then you won't be able to rotate it around. It'll be stuck in there. So we're just about there really. I think I think the problem is that stuff when I hit this clutch fork. This damn hose up here. Again. Alright. So we're around the throw out back. There they are, so let's so do another bump and see if I can get it in. Oh. 
That actually went not too bad. Not exactly straight on this side, so I gotta wiggle it to this side a little bit. Other than that, All right, so I got it all kind of tightened up. Well, not tightened up, but I got it where it needs to be. of an inch so we've got to be into it we're into the throw up iron because I mean that's really what, you, what your problem is you don't want to push the bearing in and break it I don't want to put all these tools all over the place ultimately reason you don't want to suck it up with the bolts is just because you don't want to shove that bearing into itself and damage it but no we're right there like i said i mean is it goes in there a good probably a half an inch and that sixteenth of an inch ain't gonna be what's keeping it out so it's it's in there it's just i think it's just the bell the uh the bell housing on the on the transmission isn't clean and it's just fighting it was just fighting going into the flywheel housing so as that I mean I guess it went in easier than I thought it was gonna but ultimately it's still fought me that last little bit Thanks, is now I gotta put all these bolts back in. I mean, like coming out, it's coming out is pretty easy because most of them are gone or broken. Now they're all there. Okay, so those two bolts right there in the middle, they are the bolts that hold the, um, the hanger spring. So. Here's a new one. It's got a. Uh, it's sort of a part number on it, I guess. But, uh, so, obviously, it's directional. That side's the front. So, it goes over those two, two bolts. And put a couple nuts on it. And tighten it up. And then uh, it should be good. Um, that little tab right there sticking out right here. That's one of the. Uh, brackets that the spring hangs on. Um, there's another one over there, kind of in the dark. Uh, that's the other one it hangs on. So once we get that back up in there, then we can put the jack down and it'll be a little easier to work under it. All right, so I got that spring in there. You see how it rests on that section there. And it rests on that bracket over there. Um, I hooked up the airline uh, and the plugs, a couple of plugs that 
go into the transmission. Um, something sort of interesting, which I, I don't know if it's got anything to do with the reason the flywheel housing broke. But when I put that in there, this, this, uh, the spring apparently is, is longer on one side than the other. One side's like 12 and a half inches from the end to the hole. The other side's 11 and a half inches. Let's see how that says front on it, as well as the other one. I put it in there so it was the front, and it was actually shifted over this way too far to the, to the driver's side. So this is the piece that was in there, and this was on the passenger side. So even though that said front, that was actually facing the rear of the vehicle. Um, it's the same way I have it in there now. And it, like I said, it doesn't reach going the other way. So I don't know if that was something that happened when it was put together. If it's in there wrong, if it shifted one way or the other. I, I don't really have the answer to that. All I know is everything's in there and tight and all the motor mounts. Uh, I mean, the rear motor mounts, they fit in like a V. So I actually had to turn the engine because having it with no mounts on that one side for so long, it, it, it actually twisted the it pulled it pulled the driver's side back so it wasn't um it wasn't lined up so i actually i actually had to push the front full to the to the, to the passenger side to get it to rotate like this a little bit because when it was sitting in there it was high high on the back side of the mount so like i said i had to with, with no mounts on this side and the, and the torque and it just kind of tweaked it in there so i had to kind of pull it back but like I say, I don't know if that had something to do. I don't know if those mounts are in there incorrectly or, or what it is. I don't think they are because they, they, don't, they don't look like they're different on one side or the other. They look the same either way. So I don't exactly know that, but keep that in mind as you're doing that. That front might be rear. So um, I need to come up in here and install the shifter so I gotta get the I have to get the um, gasket and uh, I'll put the shifter on all right so I got a part number on this it was uh, Four three zero five two nine four. Um, it's a very similar gasket. I don't know if they had an update or something with it. I got this from the dealer. Uh, I gave him the bin, and this is what he gave me. It's the same number that was on the, the gasket that I took off, which is a little strange, but it's it's a little different. It's got like these these little notches right here that the other one didn't have. So I don't know if that's for draining because it's like such a such a big square hole there I think maybe the fluid was able to sit on top and puddle and then kind of run out so maybe they put those on there as like a drain so uh it would allow the um whatever gear oil that got whipped up there to drain down and then it wouldn't kind of leak out over the top of the gasket I don't know that's just speculation I don't exactly know why it's the way that it is all I know is that it is. So. Oops. Touch that thing. This one kind of stinks. Everything's so filthy on this truck. It's a sander. It just. Everything's covered in sand, so. Try to put that in neutral, I guess.
Well, it goes into some of them, so I'm sure it'll go in all of them. I just wanted to make sure it did what it was supposed to. And it seems to, so. We'll keep moving on. So, I had two, two sets of lines. So, I had to uh, reinstall this boot again. Um, I went and looked at the, the video so I could reorient the hoses the way that they were. It probably doesn't make a difference, but it does to me. Yes.
build up pressure so I can check the splitter and stuff. for all the gears it's all hooked up um, let it run a little bit check the leaks make sure that rear main seal isn't leaking and uh, hook up the drive shaft and the sand to shoot and then this section of my repairs should be done and yeah, I'll move on to something else all right so I got this drive shaft back in um, the center of the uh, oh, I can't remember what that's called center bearing um, U joint, new U joint straps in the front and the back for the two new U joints. Um, torque them to 125 foot pounds. Uh, the rating is 115 to 135, so I just want 125. Um, that's all back in, so I just gotta put the sand to shoot in, and then should be done. I'll put the sand to shoot in, put the sander spinner on, and um, drop this back down and bolt it back in. So I just pulled it up and turned it to the side, so the brackets kind of hung up there. All right, so I got the drop shoot and the spinner back on, and. Uh, Everything works. I changed out some grease fittings and stuff that were in there. Um, you can see now, it's kind of what it looks like. So, that's that. Um, hope this helps somebody. Thanks for watching.